Well, pleasure's all mine. This is Dave Beasley from New York Raceworks, um, sitting in Manhattan with um, Dane Alderson. How's yep. it going? You act fantastic. Oh, man. Dane, cool. Dane's in town uh, <laughs> in Birdland all week. Birdland all week. We're doing uh, five nights. We've got the final night tonight, and it's it's been great. It's been incredible. It's one of my favorite clubs to perform in, and it's one of my favorite cities in the world, like so many other people. It's... Uh, Overwhelming, exciting, uh, just just everything. It's so much fun. So much fun being here. I mean, we got a chance to hear you last night, and you blew the roof off the place last night. I, I have to say. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. Um, it's uh, last night was a, was a lot of fun. I mean, I like I like I keep saying, I'm uh, just so incredibly lucky to be playing with the Yellow Jackets. It's just it's something that. Man, not in a million years I thought I'd be I'd be working with these guys, and it, it's uh, it just I woke up one morning and had an email from Will Kennedy. Yeah, tell me tell me about that. How, how did they discover you? Well, um, so I moved to the U.S. to Charlottesville, Virginia. It was about a little over six years ago now, and um, I hooked up with a bunch of great musicians there in town. There's a very vibrant music scene going right. on there. Some really talented folks. And uh, I've got some family there. My mother and sister uh, have been living there for, I think, 17, 18 years now, wow. something like that. So Charlottesville, it's been a bit of a home away from home for me when I was still based in Perth. I visited a few times and uh, fell in love with it on my first visit. It was, it was and is an, an incredible town. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it was, it was about three years ago now. I was... Um, uh, mm -hmm. Going through a little bit of a rough patch, I, uh, uh, I'd, I'd moved back into my mother's house, so I, I was hanging out with her for a little bit, and um, <laughs> I remember it was uh, in 2015, it was winter, uh, um, that's one thing living in Perth, Australia, like seasons are, are non-existent, it exist. it's just hot all year, <laughs> all year round, so absolutely, so uh, getting to experience winter time and how that affects you know working and gigs right. and even just driving just getting out and getting stuff done and doing stuff it's uh, it's difficult 
Um, <laughs> and so it was winter time. I, I didn't have any gigs booked for like a couple months. Like stuff was getting cancelled, and and I was just I reached a, a stage. I was there. I was just going, what am, what am I doing? Well, you know, I, right. I didn't really have much of a plan. Um, I had come over to hang out uh, with my family, with my mum and sis, which was great, which was really cool. Um, but I was, you know, starting to get a little concerned and I was, I was making plans to head back to Australia, uh, potentially. Right. Um, and, uh, man, and so I, I woke up one morning, um, and opened up my laptop and there was an email from Will Kennedy. Oh my God. It's an email. Hey, Dane, how's it going? Saw a couple videos of you on YouTube. Um, we're looking for a bass player. Would you like to do some gigs with us? Oh my god. That's how I got the gig with the Yellow Jackets. It's completely unsolicited. Completely unsolicited. Uh, it was the last thing I ever expected um, uh, to hear from this band, this incredible band. And I thought it was a joke at first, of right. course. Um, uh, but as it turned out, uh, 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 the way Will got in touch with, with me was uh, uh, through a mutual friend of ours a drummer friend, a guy named Andy Fizenden, who I used to work a whole bunch with back home right. uh, in a band called Void, uh, with Troy Roberts on sax, who's in New York now, he's playing with Joey DeFrancesco, ah, there you um, and, uh, and an incredible uh, piano player, a guy named Tom O'Halloran. Um, and Will saw a couple of clips of us uh, online, uh, a couple of gigs that we did back in Perth in uh, 2011, I think. Right. And, um, and, uh, Will, uh, you know, showed the guys in the band, Bob and Russ, uh, a couple of clips and, um, and then, uh, Will all of a sudden was like, wait a minute, I know that drummer. I've, I <laughs> played at a drum show with him in Melbourne. Right. And, um, so William hit up Andy to ask him about me and, you know, who I am, where am I based and everything. And Andy got back to him and he said, dude, dude, it's my mate Dane, and he actually lives in the U.S. He's in Virginia oh, right now. And uh, so it just, it, everything just kind of worked out perfectly. I, I, and uh, Will hit me up, and I I'd had my first gig with the band in uh, Denver, Colorado. That was kind of like my audition. Right. And, um, and I had a, around about a month to prepare. They sent me through... I think it was like 14 or 15 tunes and I knew a couple of them but I had a bit of homework I had to do um, and yeah and had the first show in Denver and it went really well and uh, I've, I've been in the band ever since and uh, it's been a, been a crazy ride man and so we just just completed um, uh, well my second album with the band the first album was Coherence Coherent. Uh, which was an incredible experience and this one raising our voice which was a, a whole lot of fun recording and um, uh, it was an amazing experience an amazing experience and I think it's their 27th album as a group and yes yeah, probably 27th studio album 27th yeah, studio almost, album yeah, that's yeah. right that's right crazy absolutely crazy and as I understand, it just went number one on um, Jazz Times. That's right. Yeah. That's right, man. As of yesterday, we just we just found out, and that just blew us all away. Uh, none of us expected that to happen, um, and uh, we're just totally blown away by that. And the and the feedback and response from from everyone so far has been great. It's been. It's been really cool, and uh, yeah, the whole experience with, with this album in particular has right. been, been so overwhelming, man. It's uh, been amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, so when we first started talking, you know, it was before you were going into the studio to, to record. Uh, That's right. Voice. Right. That's right, man. Absolutely, and, and you guys hooked me up with, uh, with that beautiful instrument, the prototype, the six string. Um, so I, I was able to use that, I, I believe, on five of the tunes on the album, and it just it just came up beautifully, and, and um, it was uh, uh, yeah, very happy, very happy with how it all turned out. Well, let us just say, you know, we were honored, you know, that, that you were able to willing to use an instrument, you know, just kind of cold like that. Oh, yeah, you know, it came, you know, the instrument came together pretty quick. You know, Dave worked his magic. Yeah, made it happen and uh, we shipped it out to you and 
I guess the rest is history. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And you guys really put a, a lot of time and effort into that, and uh, and that was uh, um, yeah, it was so great having that bass in the studio, and 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 it worked out really well. It worked out really well, and uh, fell in love with it from the first day, <laughs> man. Yeah, we, we saw it. You know, you really had it out of your hands. You know, um, keeping track on video and you know YouTube and things like that. Absolutely, yeah, just, man. Just thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, um, it was really special for us. Oh man, well it's yeah. it's me that should be thanking you guys, man, because uh, uh, um, David he uh, uh, wow, what an incredible incredible luthier, and uh, he just knows everything about everything when it comes to uh, these bass guitars and um, I've never worked with someone as we were chatting about <laughs> earlier I've never worked with someone uh, so thorough and so um, pays so much attention to every detail of the instruments it's uh, like we've spent hours and hours over the phone just talking yeah. about the finest smallest little you know um, everything, every aspect of the instrument and it's been so much fun working with you guys and and um, and yeah it's been, been incredible man, incredible. Well you know, we appreciate hearing you know, the end result you know, in your hands and you just recently took delivery of um, version 2 which we call Oceania. The Oceana, yeah. oh my goodness I am uh, I'm three days in with the Oceana <laughs> And uh, but I tell you the the first night I I picked it up on the first run of uh, our gigs here at Birdland it just felt like I'd been playing it forever. Wow! And um, uh, what a what a beautiful instrument, a beautiful instrument, and incorporating the the ghost MIDI system yes, now. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness, man! The uh, to be able to. Um, uh, not have the the big GK clamp now right. on 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 my other bass. Um, that's just solved so many problems. You just want to integrate. You don't, you don't have to play over the uh, the pickup. And now it's just all part of the instrument. It's all part yeah. of the instrument, and uh, the the ghost system is just so incredibly even every note, and particularly the B and the E strings as well, right. which. Uh, um, the way I set up my bass, I, I have those strings a little higher off the neck, so the right. the old pickup it, it wouldn't just pick up the meatiness of those strings, right. and I'd always struggle with that. But this ghost system, man, wow! Yeah, the pickup is in the saddle. So that's right. It's, that's it's right. Direct contact, yes. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, so yeah, this is this is going to be fun, man. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> hitting this bass, oh my god! Yeah, our original master plan was you were going to transition from the Alder, you know, prototype mm -hmm. into Oceania, but um, the air airline lost the first base. That's right, that's <laughs> right, and luckily it, it, um, it reappeared. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys, you guys came through for oh me and really helped me out with that, and um, <laughs> oh my goodness, that saved my life. Yeah, I came yeah. to New York with, <laughs> without a base, <laughs> so I, um, you guys, yeah, were right onto that and really helped me out. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Dave had just, just Done the final setup on the bass last week. Wow! So it, it really worked out. Oh my goodness! So incredible! Absolute, amazing! Oh man, it's uh, I, I'm I'm in love with it. I'm I'm in love with this instrument, and uh, what a beautiful finish on it as well. Oh my goodness! The the gentleman yeah. that you guys work with. Yeah, um, he, he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, oh man, he knocked he, it out of the park. Went all out on that one, <laughs> 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 to say the least. Yeah. Now I want to backtrack um, to the new album, uh, raising your voice, Absolutely. our voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it What does it feel like? You know, you you have your first um, compositional contributions to Yell Jacks on this record. Mm -hmm. If I'm correct. What does it feel like to have um, this is actually three of your compositions? Yeah. On a record, a number one record in this oh, in this genre. What What is that like? Oh man, it's it's <laughs> an incredible feeling. I mean. Right? I, I never uh, considered myself much of a composer. It's certainly one aspect of, of what I do that I, uh, you know, I've got much more to learn about, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of things about harmony and 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 theory that I that I'm eager to learn. Um, but my goodness, being in a band with Russell Ferrante and Bob Mincer, and you can do a lot worse. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. They certainly right. they they know what they're doing, and right. and um, and 
It was an incredible experience. Two of the pieces, two of them are, are kind of short little, uh, little bass interludes. Right, right? and uh, they're beautiful. Yes. Oh, thank you, yeah. man. Thank you. Um, on our on our gigs, uh, every now and again, I'll do like a little solo spot where I fool around with the loop station and um, and the VB ninety nine, the MIDI unit. Right. Um, so uh, I was able to get a couple of those tracks on there, and um, and the the one piece I, I did contribute, brotherly. Um, uh, it was so much fun, and, and we only got together as a band to rehearse it. It was less than a week before we hit the wow. studio. So those guys, they, they put a lot of lot of work into it, and um, and I'm really happy with the result. It was uh, an amazing experience. Um, and a uh, little intimidating given Bob Mincer and Russell Ferrante, right. one of my compositions. <laughs> but um, man, they, they just went all out on it. And, uh, and Will Kennedy, oh my goodness. Man, I got, uh, like when I wrote the tune, I'd, I um, was just fooling around with a few loops and a few things on GarageBand. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I wrote it out on Sibelius, I got all kinds of specific with uh, the drum track. Um, I was very particular about what I wanted to hear and, and Will just, he just nailed it. He just nailed every part of that tune and, and uh, he's just, man, what, a, what an incredible drummer. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's, one of the, he's one of those not real high echelon players where when he, when he came into the Yellow Jackets, um, the, the bar really went up. Oh yeah. Yeah, he, the bar really went up. I, I'm a big you know, Yellow Jackets fan, going back to the, the first album. Yeah. And when he came to the band on Four Corners, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? That's right. Finesse, pocket, um, his drum sound, oh, yeah. his feel. It was, it was like no one else's that I've heard at that point. Absolutely, man. You know, Absolutely. He stands, he stands alone and you stand, you stand with him. Oh, yeah, and you guys sound like one, one symbiotic or organism. Oh, oh you know? man. You know what? I, I, I would never use the word easy to describe playing with the Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you when you hit with guys like that, and as a bass player hitting with a drummer like Will, um, whose groove and feel is just so solid and so dynamic at the same time, uh, you know, like we were chatting a bit earlier about, mm -hmm. he'll just be slamming out these nasty grooves and, and these fat shuffle grooves and stuff, but he does it all at such a beautiful dynamic. He can do all of that like quietly, which is right. it's so bizarre at, at, um, at how he does that, and it just blows me away every time. But it, it, then it just makes it so easy to kind of lock in with him, you know. Right. And um, and it's just it's such a joy getting to hit with that guy. Yeah. And to share the stage with that guy. Oh my goodness. I, I was so excited to, to hear that he can't he'll come back into the band after ten years. Yeah. Because that's of, right. His last recording was Club Nocturne. Nocturne. Mm -hmm. And. Um, that's you know easily one one of my favorite you know earlier albums. Yeah. But you know hearing him back in the band now, it's like, and, you, and you guys playing together is just it's unstoppable. Oh, it's unstoppable man. at thank this you, point. Man. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Where, where do you go from here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you.
I then not a day goes by I don't I don't think that to myself. It's uh, it's amazing. Well, hearing you guys live, it sounds like you're all keeping each other on each other's toes. Right. You know. Right. You can hear that in the music. Mm-hmm. You can really hear. You know, the music is you know, it's such a level. You know, a high level. You know, and that's that's saying a lot for Yellow Jackets, right? You know, because it's always at the highest level mm-hmm. of musicianship. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, you know, raising our voice. It's just like you know, go out and get it. You know, if you're a jazz fan, get that album. Whatever you gotta do, download it. Whatever, Amazon, oh, get man. the album. It's incredible. Oh, thank you, man. We're very proud. Very proud of it. And um, and it was a yeah. The whole experience with that album was just amazing. An unforgettable experience. Unbelievable. Oh man. I want to take take a last few minutes. Uh, we were just talking about on different genres of music. Mm-hmm. Now. As uh, I understand, you didn't start off on the bass guitar. That's right. That's right, man. I was a, <laughs> I was a heavy metal drummer. My father, Rick, he's a, a drummer. Uh, he lives uh, in Perth, uh, my hometown. Um, uh, he was uh, was and is a drummer. Has been all of his life, and um, and so he started teaching me the drums from when I was probably about two or three years old. And that was my that was my plan. I was going to be a, a a drummer, and specifically a heavy metal drummer. Specifically, had the double double pedals and um, uh, you know the the tom rack and just the you know Metallica and Pantera were right. my whole life. That music uh, uh, changed my life in, in many ways, and and still have so much respect for those bands and, and those guys that can play that music, man. Oh right. my goodness. You need some energy and some stamina <laughs> right. to keep up with that music. Um, so yeah, I started out on drums. I was a I was a total metal junkie, um, and then uh, the Chili Peppers came along. My, yeah, of yeah. course, like so yeah. many other bass players, man. Uh, my stepbrother at the time he had a couple Chili Peppers albums, and um, uh, the one that just. Uh, blew me away. Well, there were two of them: uh, uh, Blood Sugar, Blood Sugar yeah. of course, yeah. and uh, One Hot Minute. Right. The album with Dave Navarro. On right. The, the one right. album that he recorded on. And uh, oh my goodness, I just never heard the bass guitar um, played like that before. Uh, and it just totally blew me away. And everything Flea was doing, uh, right. slapping and his thumb technique and all that stuff. Just totally blew me away, so I, I begged my folks to, to get me a bass, and and that's how I started out. I uh, because of my drumming background, yeah, and brain. absolutely uh, the rhythmical side of things. Like I just started slapping on the bass, treating my thumb as a bass drum, and whichever finger was plucking as the snare, right. and I just jam along with drum grooves and. Um, and then uh, you know started learning a lot of Chili Peppers tunes, and then gradually just moving to my fingers and right. working on grooves and stuff. And um, and then after the Chili Peppers, uh, I started checking out my dad's album collection. Wow. Everything from uh, oh my goodness, Oscar Peterson uh, to Weather Report yeah. to Stevie Wonder, um, uh, Michael Jackson. Um, just, just everything and anything. He had a bunch of Miles Davis albums, John Coltrane albums. Um, uh, oh my goodness! Yeah. So I just started going through my dad's album collection, and it was really the, of course, once again, like so many other bass players, the Weather Report stuff. Yeah, that, that, that got a lot of us. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. There was an album he had called Night Passage. That that is the album. Oh, 1982. 82. 81, 80, 81, no, more like 81. Night Passage, the last, second to last album Jocko was on. That's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Oh, my God. The opening track. Oh, yeah, yeah that, yeah. that shuffle feel. Burskin. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So incredible. And uh, the the track uh, Port of Entry. Port of Entry. That's, that's some of the... Takes some of the finest bass playing and some of Jaco's finest bass playing in my opinion that I've ever heard before. That, that, I think that album really demonstrates Jaco at, at the, the true height of his, his creative powers or, or playing powers. I agree. Everything he played on the album is just flawless. Oh yeah. Flawless. Absolutely man. And I, 
I heard that album and I just couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. And uh, I remember just sitting there with, with headphones trying to figure out what he was doing. And, right. Um, Good luck. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm still <laughs> right. trying to figure out what, yeah. he, what he was doing. Um, wow, man. But um, yeah, and uh, so checking out my dad's album collection, I started getting into jazz a lot more. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he put me in a, in a couple of local big bands. Um, you know, to, uh, he wanted to. He wanted me to learn how to read, and uh, which I have to say, has totally saved my life many yeah. times and opened up so many opportunities for me. Right. Uh, being able to read music and uh, um, wow, I've been able to experience things, uh, musical situations, different bands that I, I don't think I ever would have been able to experience, right. like playing with symphony orchestras and um, you know stuff like that which uh, yeah you know you're not gonna you know, you know play your play your way around that by no the, that's right yeah, yeah. that's right so I'm very grateful for my my early days learning how to read and, right. and playing in big bands as well uh, really opened my ears up you know learning to support horn sections and right. locking in with different rhythm sections and um, yeah, because in the big band you truly are you know spoke in the wheel exactly like, that's right, man. Yeah, it's all just, you know, in intertwined. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, uh, I then, um, I left high school a year earlier to study uh, my uh, Bachelor of Jazz degree mm -hmm. at the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts. Right. Uh, which, was, which was an incredible experience. I, I, I'm still, so many of my close friends today are people that I met and got to jam with and hit with um, uh, back at university mm -hmm. and I learned so much and it was uh, uh, it was just a, a great experience being thrown together with a whole bunch of other musicians and uh, uh, just getting to jam every day and, right. and share albums and share ideas and stuff and, um, and the course back home at the academy was uh, uh, incredible! So many amazing lecturers and teachers, right. and um, yeah, man. Um, you know, Australia is a hotbed of art, like serious talent. Sure is, you know? man. It sure is. You know, one of my favorite guys, Virgil Donati. Oh yeah! Oh the my! The octopus. Goodness. The octopus. That's <laughs> right, man. Uh, when I back in my earlier days as a, as a drummer, my dad took me to a Virgil clinic, oh. and because uh, he has all those uh, foot rudiments, right? Using double pedals and stuff and uh, he handed out a sheet at his clinic and both my dad and I we went straight home and we would <laughs> we spent months and months trying to do that stuff and yeah man Virgil's got just on another Insanity. level Insanity, yeah yeah man and I got to meet him a few months back in LA Will and I did a drum and bass clinic there okay. and that was a that was a uh, an awesome moment getting to uh, getting to meet him and have a chat with him and um, yeah man and there's a, a lot of talented folks back home, yeah. and, and in Perth, in particular, there's a there's a there's a great music scene there, and, and, and an incredible jazz scene as well. There are some amazing musicians back home, um, so I was so fortunate to get to play in bands in Perth that really pushed me and really forced me to open my ears right. and learn about group improvisation and and uh, the guys that just took me under their wing and, and just gave me a stack of albums like that. Right. It was like, listen to this stuff. And, um, and oh man, it was such an incredible learning experience. And uh, I'm so grateful for my early days back home. Yeah, and, sounds, uh, sounds like quite the incubator. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, man. Oh my goodness. And it's like, you're saying that to say that, you know, like, as you know, our young musicians and, and even old musicians alike, you can't stop listening. That's right. You can't stop. You, if, if I'm not hearing something new every week, there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, we just shared music uh, just before the interview, and I can't wait to hear it. You, know, you want to be excited every day about, you know, what you're going to hear next. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And, oh my goodness, it's overwhelming how much amazing music is out there. It really is. And, um, and but that's, a, that's a, a really important thing, keeping your ears open keeping and, ears and open. constantly listening, checking out what's new and... Uh, what's going on and um, and uh, absolutely man like 
you yourself. I can't wait to, to check out your album collection, man. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. On that note, I want to ask you, where are you headed next after Birdland? After Birdland, so we have one more show tonight. I will um, be there. Awesome. Um, uh, then we have a week off, uh, and then we're going to be touring Europe for a couple of weeks. Excellent. Uh, along with uh, uh, this incredible singer who recorded on Raising Our Voice, Luciana Souza. Uh, she's going to be joining us for most of the tour. Um, so that's going to be great. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we're. Uh, yeah, the next couple months are going to be pretty busy. Uh, uh, we've got a, a few more shows around the U.S. Mm -hmm. in November, and um, uh, and we're really yeah trying to promote the album and get it out there. And um, and uh, yeah, the the guys the, they always have a have a, a pretty busy schedule, and they keep me on my toes. That's for sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, once again, you know, thank you for sitting down with me. It's yeah. great seeing you guys. A big Yellow Jackets fan. I can't wait to see the show tonight. And Dan Alderson, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, David. Absolute thank pleasure. You.